Tuishima School in Arusha, Tanzania was born out of a vision by Felix and Naomi Masengi. These Tanzanian nationals initially set up a school for the poorest of the poor and neediest of the needy. Hope for Tanzania has provided volunteers to contribute to the work taking place and this video provides a personal perspective from three volunteers who visited the school in 2017. Obviously at first I was really nervous because it's the first time I've been away from home for three weeks, but it's the longest. But since I've come here, it's been a real eye-opener, like and probably one of the best experiences I'll probably ever have. Um, it's very, for your first time I've noticed it's very emotionally draining due to the fact you're visiting children's homes and you're obviously seeing children that, don't, that aren't very as well off as we are back in England seeing some of these children and where they are in education is just amazing. They really, really appreciate the, the help that they get. My family sponsor a little girl called Shukuru and when I went to see her house it was a mud hut and they don't earn enough money to be able to send her to school which is really sad because Shukuru is one of the brightest in her class. So my family send, I think it's £20 a month, to support Shukaru in sending her to school. So that doesn't seem a lot to us, but here, that can get you an education. The clothes you need to wear, and the food that you need to eat off your table. Shukaru is a very, very bright, pretty young girl, and she will grow up to do many things when she's older. So, yeah. Having never left Europe before, this has been um, a very big trip for me to make. I arrived here and immediately have been amazed and humbled by the friendliness, the welcome of the people both in the school um, and in the homes that we've visited and generally in Africa, in, in the towns that we've visited. Um, so, mostly I, I see smiley faces everywhere. They're smiley, happy, content faces, despite, in many cases, quite a lot of poverty. So we visited a few houses where the inhabitants have so, so little and yet are so welcoming to us, so generously preparing food or drink for us, when you know that actually that, that is a sacrifice for them, that costs them something, that may cost them if they cooked you a meal, the rest of their week's um, ability to be able to feed their family sufficiently. The children are so eager to learn they almost fight for the chance to speak to the teacher, to tell them the answer to the questions that's being asked. There's no apathy or actually no, no real behaviour issues. The, the children want to learn, they want to be here. And that's lovely to see. To be able to bless the children and the staff with things that they haven't come across before, um, to show the kind of practice that we employ in, in, in England that might benefit the, the classroom situations here. Um, again, there's an eagerness with, within the teachers, within the teaching staff, to want to learn from, from those of us that work in schools in England, to show quite simple methods um, that we employ in England that they want to replicate here in Tanzania. We are being enriched by talking to them about their lives and learning about their lives and the way that they live, their history, their daily struggles, what they 
have in their hearts, what their hopes are for the future, how we can help enable that ha to happen. Um, but actually, when I think particularly of visiting people with very little in their homes, I just feel very privileged and blessed to have been able to do that. And that possibly will be the thing that I carry with me most when I think of people living... Hi, my name's Steph. Um, I've come over from England. In England, at the moment, I'm training to be a teacher. So um, I'm going into my third year of my course. Um, so I have got a bit of experience within schools, which is really good. Um, I've been able to put my practice um, from England and help out some of the teachers with new strategies for such thing, things such as getting children's attention. So we've used different clapping methods um, and things like that, which they've really enjoyed to learn. We've taught a couple of maths lessons and English lessons um, and we've brought children up to the front and got them involved in lessons as opposed to having them sitting in their places and copying work. Um, and then we've seen the teachers use these strategies in their own teaching, which has been really, really good to see. Um, so I've been doing a bit of work in class two, which is um, children that are about seven or eight years old. Um, and I've been helping the teachers alongside other members of the team to bring in differentiation to the classes so that children that are either high achieving or much lower are able to progress as well as the rest of the class. Um, and there's a young girl called Irene in the class who has been held back a few years due to not being able to complete the exams that mean she can pass, uh, pass on to the next class. Um, and she does really struggle with her reading, so I every day I've been finding um, a simple book for her to read um, with a few words and mainly pictures and talking to her about it. Um, and the teachers have recognised. I mean, when I initially started, they told me she couldn't read. Um, and I demonstrated to them and had her read to me as she was, um, as they were watching, which has really, really shown them that she can. And then they've helped her to progress more with her reading. And hopefully this will mean that she can move on more with her, with children within her age group. If you'd like to find out more, then check out www.hopefortanzania.org.